BYD update for the new year of the snake. I'll lightly cover any updates about financials and production, but what I'm most excited to talk about is BYD's latest development in assisted driving. In my earlier videos, I said that ADAS and autonomy is BYD's biggest weakness, but that was before they announced God's Eye, which is kind of a frightening name and badass too. It's a major step forward for BYD, and they're giving it away for free. And if that doesn't scare you, I'll also talk about how Chinese automakers like BYD are racing each other to integrate DeepSeek AI into their vehicles. Now, sometimes I may come across as being joyful when announcing this stuff, but I'm really not. I'm impressed as hell with the technology, but also concerned about how the US auto industry, my industry, is going to keep up with this level of innovation and production. In late December, BYD started updating its vehicles in China over the air to deploy its God's Eye software. 21 different models are eligible for one of three different levels of capability. From the BYD Seagull to the most expensive Yongwang vehicles, they're all based on the Sanji architecture. This allows them to scale driver assistance and autonomy. To be clear, the word autonomy gets widely used in reporting on new vehicles, and you'll see headlines proclaiming that BYD rolled out autonomy across its lineup, but that's a, a bit of an overstatement. I did a video explaining how SAE defined different levels of driver automation. You can check that out, but simply put, level two steers the vehicle while also controlling speed, but you need to be ready to take control by having your hands on the wheel. Level two plus was technically not defined by SAE, but systems like GM Super Cruise and Tesla's FSD Supervised allow you to take your hands off the wheel because it uses cameras to make sure that you still have your eyes on the road. Level three, you can look away from the road, but you still need to be awake to resume control. And finally, level four and level five are robo-taxi-like systems where it's in complete control. Think of Waymo. What BYD is rolling out is a very capable level two system. The Chinese government still needs to approve automakers to let drivers take their hands off the wheel thus making it a level two plus system. God's Eye catches BYD up to other competitors like Neo, Xpeng, and Zeker. And in China, Tesla does not yet have full self-driving capability. They're close to approval by the Chinese government, but you know, maybe they want to hold that up a little to use as a bargaining chip or just never let the co-president of the US get that approval. There are three different levels of capability with BYD system. God's Eye C, also called D-Pilot 100, features 12 cameras, including a trinocular front array, five radar sensors, and 12 ultrasonic sensors, all feeding data into a central computer capable of 100 tops or trillions of operations per second. This system will go into budget-friendly BYD vehicles, including the budget-minded Seagull. For comparison, Tesla's Hardware 3 computer is capable of 144 tops, but even Elon now admits that that won't be enough processing power to achieve the full autonomy that he's promised. God's IB, or D-Pilot 300, increases the processing to 300 tops and adds a single LiDAR unit. This will go mostly into Denza, and some of the higher-end BYD models. Tesla's Hardware 4 computer has over 1,000 tops based on the comments made by the company, but does not use any LiDAR. Elon hates LiDAR and would rather go to jail than admit he was wrong. They, they put you in jail right away. No trial, no, no nothing. Journalists, we have a special jail for journalists. And God's Eye A, or D-Pilot 600, uses a computer capable of 600 tops and has three LiDAR units. This will go mostly into Young Wong vehicles, which have been sporting the three lumps at the top of the windshield since their launch. Interesting to note that no Feng Chen Bao vehicles were shown. I mentioned in an earlier episode that they have Huawei's Quan Kun 8S 3.0 system. Huawei is a megatech company, so it appears that BYD 
may be hedging its bet and still working with them on 8S systems for that brand. BYD's God's Eye comes out of its internal development program with 5,000 engineers and plenty of computing power off vehicle to develop it. So how good is it? I could be hyping this up more and proclaiming this as the best system in China, but we need to see more. Viaducts, overpasses, on and off ramps appear to be no problem. At launch, D-Pilot 300 and 600 systems that have LiDAR can perform navigation on autopilot across all road types, including city centers. The camera-only D-Pilot 100 system in BYD brand vehicles will only do highway or high-speed navigation on autopilot, with the expectation that a future software update will expand it to urban areas. This system can also autonomously valet park, like Tesla's actually smart summoned, which they just launched on its vehicle in China. BYD chairman Wang Xiangfu said that smart driving is becoming a universal safety feature like seatbelts, which is, you know, easy for him to say now that he has a good system to offer his customers. Is this a robo taxi? No, this is not yet a fully autonomous level four or five system like Waymo in the US. There are other Chinese company field testing that type of vehicle today, and BYD is not yet one of them. But it does put BYD's vehicles pretty much on par or maybe better than other cars in China and ahead of Tesla in China, which is not yet allowed to offer FSD. Where is it available? Their announcement only covers new energy vehicles in the China market. Presumably, they want to perfect it in their largest market before rolling it out elsewhere. Given that vehicles need to collect data, then virtually test and adjust the system for different road configurations in different countries, they will have to gain approval from governments and other markets for data collection and data centers, which will complicate things or maybe even ban it in some markets like Europe. We just don't know yet. How much does it cost? If you currently own a BYD, Denza, or Yongwang vehicle, congratulations, you now own a smart driving edition. They're not talking about a subscription or any extra fee. My assumption is that they want as many vehicles currently on the road using this feature to gather more data and more video to train the system to become even better. They would love to add a little cost to their vehicles in the market now, but given the price apocalypse in the China auto market, they will just give it away, give it away, give it away now. In addition to this huge AV announcement, BYD mentioned that they're joining the AI revolution and working to add DeepSeek R1 large language model to its vehicles and to its cloud. They join a host of other Chinese automakers looking to offer DeepSeek to its tech-hungry customers. Logically, in-vehicle voice recognition and digital assistance could benefit from more advanced AI, but I don't think this is so much as a logical reaction, but a little bit more of a panic, not wanting to miss out on working with a company that has made global headlines. DeepSeek is not the only AI available in China, and maybe even not the best one. Apple, for example, is believed to be working with Alibaba for its Apple intelligence that they'll roll out in China. It's not even clear how good DeepSeek is, but it is very efficient in how it uses computing power, so it can be much cheaper. Side note, I want automakers in the US to offer something like Nomi from Neo. Maybe it's something they can add or remove depending on your comfort level, but yeah, I think it's a pretty sweet feature. Previously, I viewed vehicles like the BYD Han and Tang as well-performing EVs available at a great price, but nothing too spicy. Well, 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 BYD has kicked it up a notch with the announcement of the performance BYD Han L and Tang L. Both are new energy vehicles and they get revised styling up front with a longer face. The Han L sedan comes with a standard 670 horsepower from a single rear motor. Opt for the dual motor all-wheel drive and you get a combined over 1,000 horsepower for a 0 to 62 sprint of 2.7 seconds. The single motor rear-wheel drive version won't be as fast, but, but it should be really fun. That's a lot of horsepower from a single motor and it's kind of almost unheard of. Other automakers like Tesla and Zeker 
they packed two motors together to get that much power, resulting in a tri-motor setup. The Han L can also be had as a plug-in hybrid, combining a 1.5 liter gas engine with either one electric motor delivering about 268 horsepower peak, or two of those electric motors combining for 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds. Next up is the BYD Tang L, which takes the three row, seven passenger crossover and gives it the L treatment. I particularly don't like the L designation, as a performance brand, maybe that's coming from a Western perspective. In Mandarin, it might make more sense. Like the Han L, it gets the revised styling, slightly larger dimensions, same powertrain options for the BEV or the PHEV, resulting in a zero to 62 in as little as 3.9 seconds. With all that extra power and prestige, you can expect bigger brakes, stickier tires, revised suspension, and nicer interiors, but we'll have to wait for its full reveal in March to get those details, including final pricing. BYD won't report full year-end 2024 results until late March or maybe mid-April, but a potentially bombshell report came out claiming that BYD is masking the true amount of its debt that it has with its suppliers. In the hyper-competitive Chinese market, automakers need to look out for its supply chain to make sure none of them fail. GMT Research of Hong Kong claims that BYD's real debt may be 10 times larger than what is shown on their balance sheet. If you want to get nerdy with accounting, they're not treating payables over 90 days as a liability, and they are selling or borrowing against its receivables, money they are owed. BYD uses much longer payment terms, averaging 275 days to pay suppliers. Standard delivery terms in the industry are net 30 or net 90. All of this creativity could catch up to BYD. As for sales, all automakers in China experience a hangover in January, a predictable drop from December, but year over year is up 50%. They were helped in part by higher overseas sales. BYD's efforts to grow outside of China are starting to pay off a little bit. The China market is showing signs of a major shakeup after two years of a price war. The EV maker Jiayu closed its doors late last year despite being backed by tech giant Baidu. Dongfang Motor and Chang'an Automobile, both stand-owned enterprises, separately announced that they are seeking a merger to deal with the competitive pressures. It's widely believed that their separate announcements are actually the start of a merger between the two. The China auto market is just too crowded and growth in sales may have peaked. This should not be surprising. Sales in Europe have not recovered from pre-COVID levels and forecasts do not predict that they ever will. They've hit peak auto. And in the US, everybody wants sales to get back to 17 million units, but nobody is forecasting that to happen, leading people to predict that our market has probably peaked too. On the subject of making more battery EVs and plug-in hybrids, BYD is continuing to lay low as tariffs emerge from the White House. BYD does assemble some commercial trucks and buses in the U.S., so those tariffs on components coming into the U.S. will get more expensive. They can try to seek a waiver claiming that their U.S. jobs will be at risk, but I doubt that they have the political connections to get that done. And as for a Mexico plant... Yeah, on hold pending some kind of larger geopolitical negotiation. That's it for this month. BYD's products get a much needed boost in intelligent driving. Their financial accounting practices get questioned, but sales momentum is still pushing them higher while their competitors struggle. As always, thanks for watching and hang on because 2025 is going to be a little crazy.